Late last year, I listened to a book that I think I listened to it within the first week that it came out. It's a book called Same as Ever. It's by an author named Morgan Housel, who does sort of these psychology-oriented books. He wrote The Psychology of Money, which is also a fantastic book. But Same as Ever is really interesting at its sort of core. The, the basic concept of the book is that we as humans always are looking forward and asking, you know, what's coming next? What's next on that? What's the big, uh, you know, major development that's going to come in the next five years in tech? Or, you know, how is the world going to change when it comes to the environment or whatever the case may be, we are constantly looking for someone who can give us some sort of prognostication that we can rely on and sort of plan our lives around. And Morgan Housel's argument is there is no way to know what changes are coming because changes have so many different ways of coming about. There's It's essentially like the butterfly effect, right? So Somebody may be working really hard to develop technology in one particular direction and then comes to find out that that technology actually has a better application in this other direction. And that's the thing that takes off. So we're much better at looking backward and seeing how the dots connect than trying to figure out how those dots could connect going forward. So the idea is, even though that is kind of chaotic and no way to make accurate predictions going forward, what we can predict going forward are the things that have always been the same, right? Same as ever is the title of the book. And he talks about essentially the way that humans react to various different things and how there are these time-tested centuries or millennia-old truths that we can take and apply and say, no matter what comes with the economy or with technology or with our own personal finances or whatever else, here are some things that we know will be true regardless. So I was having a conversation with my son Judah, who was 14, and we were in the car and he said something, I can't remember now what it was, but one of these amazing little slang words or phrases that essentially fill my ears all the time these days. And I didn't know what this particular thing meant. So I asked him and he was explaining it to me. And this was a long-ish car ride. And so we got into a conversation, which is always a treat for me when my kids are willing to <laughs> sit and like actually have a back and forth about something. But we started talking about slang. In the course of this conversation, I was driving, Judah was riding shotgun, and he pulled out his phone and looked up slang from the 90s when I was a teenager. And he started asking me about all these different slang phrases. And so we were having a laugh about it. And then he looked up sort of a like Urban Dictionary version of what the current slang is. And he was explaining those to me. And it was a really nice, fun conversation. And at the end of it, he said, I wonder what my kids slang is going to be like. It's going to be so weird to for them to say, you know, that these phrases that I use seem old and antiquated, and I wonder what theirs are going to be. And I had just read that book, and I was like, it's funny that you mentioned that, because even though we can't possibly imagine the words and phrases that your potential future teenagers might use with their friends, I guarantee they will. They will have their own language, their own slang that they use, because that has been true for time immemorial. So what does all this have to do with photography and running a business, right? Today, I wanna take this concept and I wanna turn it on the subject of customer service. I wanna think about what changes with customer service and what stays the same. Because customer service is one of those perennial things that we as business owners need to keep a close eye on. And although, many things regarding customer service do stay the same. It's good for us to keep an eye on the trends that are happening and the shifts that are happening because as we keep up with those things, we are better able to position those as marketing phrases and terms and things to talk about that can really earn the trust of our potential clients. Welcome to This Can't Be That Hard 
My name is Anami Tonkin, and I help photographers run profitable, sustainable businesses that they love. Each week on the podcast, I cover simple, actionable strategies and systems that photographers at every level of experience can use to earn more money in a more sustainable way. Running a photography business doesn't have to be that hard. You can do it, and I can show you how. So we all go into business with the intention of giving great customer service, right? But most photographers I know don't really start their businesses with a clear picture of what that means. We believe that if we respond to people's questions and concerns and problems if they come up, and if we are very generous in the way that we respond to those things, that basically is the long and short of customer service. I would argue that that is kind of a weak definition and can actually start to create customer service problems for you down the road, but that might be a whole conversation for a different day. Good customer service is nothing new, right? I think that there are truths about customer service that extend across industries, across genres that anyone can take and apply to their businesses. Number one, our Clients, our customers, people in general, want to feel seen and heard. They want to feel cared for by the people and the businesses that they spend money with. And honestly, the more money they spend, the more they sort of expect that level of care, right? They also want their problems to be ideally avoided, right? (laughs) Nobody wants to assume that they're going to have problems, but we all know that problems and issues and, you know, things do go awry. And so second best it is that we want those problems to be solved and solved in a manner that feels good and fair to us if and when they do come up. The tough thing about being the business owner, the the service provider, right, is addressing customer service, talking about customer service, sort of assuring people that we give good customer service in any kind of new way. Because talk is cheap and people know that, right? You can say until you're blue in the face, like I give good customer service and that doesn't really mean anything unless you get into the specifics, right? So if you are being savvier about this whole umbrella topic of customer service, you want to give people tangible examples of ideally positive ways that you handle, anticipate, and provide good customer service. Because when someone is considering whether to hire you or someone else, or if they're considering hiring a photographer or not hiring a photographer, the only way that they are going to decide that the answer is yes and that you are the person is that they have to feel confident, not only that you can take great photos, but that, you know, this is going to be an experience and an investment that is worth their time and money. So my dad uses this phrase regularly. I love it. I now use it with my kids. It is the idea that yesterday's luxury is today's requirement. So we all get used to, you know, something that we hoped and dreamed and planned for for a long time. As soon as we have that thing, we start to get used to that thing. And then very quickly, we get to the place where we're like, I don't know how to go backward. (laughs) I don't know how to go back to MapQuest or opening up a Rand McNally Atlas now that I have Google Maps. Like that would be a very painful regression, right? And when it comes to customer service, again, you can't really say I give good customer service and expect that to mean much. People expect good customer service. That should not seem like icing on the cake. It should seem like part of the cake itself. So in order to be able to talk about that and get people excited and have that add to your trustworthiness and your level of professionalism that someone sort of sees when they look at you and your services that you're offering, is that we showcase ways that we anticipate and solve issues faster, more conveniently, and in a way that sort of 
maybe has some technology shine to it or seems particularly fun or something like that, right? And after we come up with those ways, then we need to talk about them. We need to build that into our social media and our newsletter. And when we're talking to a prospective client on the phone, again, people aren't going into a phone call with a potential service provider necessarily anticipating problems. If they've had problems in the past, like let's take this out of the photography realm altogether. Let's say that you are shopping for a plumber and the last time you hired a plumber, they came and they made a huge mess and they didn't clean it up and they charged you three times what the quote was because they said, oh yeah, there was this sort of problem. You know, the next time that you're looking for a plumber, you may want reassurances that that's not going to happen again. But if you're brand new to hiring a plumber, you may not know the questions to ask. If you are the service provider who says, you know, sometimes people have gone to another plumber and they make a big mess and they charge three times more. I have a policy that we, you know, clean up. It's it's cleaner than it was when we arrived. And I, you know, I stand by my quotes within 5%, you, it's guaranteed or something along those lines. I'm obviously making that example up. How can we take that and think about the problems that our clients either have or worry about having and then solve those problems in a way that you, we can talk about and sort of give people that confidence? So Again, I feel like I'm being a little bit vague here. So I want to talk about this journey that I have been on this season with This Can't Be That Hard, where leading up into this year, I spent a lot of time thinking about how I wanted to work on the business this year. And the phrase that I kept coming back to was not more, but better. So this business is four years old at the time of this recording, and I have been on this sort of crazy journey of creation. Lots of offers, lots of courses, lots of emails, lots of everything. <laughs> it is a lot, and it has been amazing, and I am very proud of everything that my team and I have been able to build. However, I feel like after this explosive season of growth, I really want to take a step back, evaluate what's here, and make it better. I want to make it so that every, you know, client interaction is as good as it can be. Every, you know, episode of the podcast is as good as it could be. Like, how can we make this business as high quality in every possible way as possible? And certainly, customer service is part of that. So last year, when I was just, I wasn't even necessarily actively looking for customer service solutions. I do feel like we give good customer service, but it's always been sort of reliant on either Facebook group interactions or, you know, well, if you can't get an answer in the Facebook group, you can send us an email and we'll get back to you. And I was talking with my dear friend, Coley, who most of you know, Coley James of the Business First Creatives podcast. I'll give a little plug for her as usual. But I was just chatting with her about all things business. I was talking about, I, I don't even honestly remember exactly how this conversation played out. But many times over the past couple of years, Coley has said, you need Airtable. And every time she said that, my answer was, or my response to her was, what is Airtable? <laughs> What is Airtable and why do I need it? And I don't know that I ever really felt like I got a straight answer or maybe she gave me good answers and I just was like earmuffs on, didn't really hear it. It bounced off. You know how it is when you are already like pedaling as hard as you can. Sometimes someone pulls up in a car and says, do you want to get in? And you're like, ah, I'm busy riding my bike. So anyway, finally, Coley said this and it somehow like clicked. It clicked into place and I was like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to dive into this. You've said this enough times that I feel like I need to do some research. And Coley pointed me in the direction of a course with a woman named Ashley Pendergraft who teaches a course for service providers, coaches, course creators on how to use 
Airtable in their businesses. So not only was this a brand new piece of software that I had never played with, and the best example or the best answer that I could find when I was looking into like, why do I need Airtable was it will replace your Google spreadsheets. And I was like, yeah, I have a lot of Google spreadsheets, but like they work fine and they're free. And why would I need to replace them? So I took a leap of faith. Coley's word is gold around here. And this woman, Ashley's course on Airtable was open. It's one of those seasonal, you know, it only opens once or twice a year. It was not a small leap of faith. It was a $2,500 course. And I didn't even really know how I was going to end up using it. But Coley gave me some examples of use cases. I went to a seminar, webinar type thing that Ashley hosted where she gave some examples of how this could be helpful. And I could see like, oh, okay, that's better than a Google spreadsheet in terms of like, it's easier to search. It's easier to see different views on various kinds of data. I'll have more data. I'll be able to keep everything in one place. Okay, fine. I'm just going to dive in. But as is often the case, the more skin you have in the game, the more a course costs or the more an experience costs or something like that, the more you're like, I'm going to use this and I'm going to squeeze every last drop out of it that I can. And man, oh man, did that play out and end up honestly kind of by surprise revolutionizing my business in the fourth quarter of 2023. So I dove in like some sort of addict (laughs) to this course and went through every single, you know, minute of it. And it actually isn't a super long course. She has done an amazing job of pairing that course back to like, you're not necessarily learning every permutation of, you know, how something can be used, but you're learning the basic building blocks so that you can create whatever you want out of it, because that is the great thing about Airtable. And it's also the tough thing because Airtable can be used for all kinds of things. But what you really need to understand is like how to use it. And so that, you know, that I think becomes the problem for Airtable because the communication there, unless you you happen to be like a database manager, which I'm certainly not, explaining to someone why they need it is kind of a hard thing to do. And the fact of the matter is that Airtable wasn't built for small business owners. It was built for huge companies and that's who primarily uses it. So it probably is these like database engineers and tech people who are their target market, their ideal clients. What I have come to find out and fully embrace and believe is that as small business owners, this piece of software, which you can use for free, has so many amazing applications for small businesses. So Airtable has now touched essentially every single corner of my business. I feel like I got organized in a way that I have never been organized with this can't be that hard. And I would have argued that I was a very organized business owner. So everything now from my courses to my backend operations to this podcast, all of it is housed within this database. I can instantly find information that I want. I can instantly see trends and, you know, data. If I have a customer, a client, a student who comes to me and says, hey, you know, I don't know whether, did I ever buy this thing? Not only can I go find that information very, very quickly, you know, I can give them all the details of all of it. It's all connected. Now, that was a, like a a Herculean effort to get that all put together. But, you know, like anything in business, the best time to plant a tree is yesterday. <laughs> the second best time is now. And I just went ahead and dove in, got everything sort of organized and ready. And it is already showing up in amazing ways this year. So I'm extremely excited about all the different ways that that will help my team, myself, certainly our customers, but the customer service piece of it that has just recently launched that I am potentially the most excited about for all of the different pieces is the brand new support ticketing system that we have created. I am currently sort of getting my feet under me with that in our Simple Sales Blueprint community. My plan is to expand that to each of my courses over the course of the year. But again, Historically, when someone has had a question or an issue with the Simple Sales Blueprint, 
We have first directed them to the Facebook group, which is amazing. And you get really quick answers and, you know, it can be really good. But Facebook, as we all know, has major drawbacks, right? It's, among other things, very difficult to search past conversations and you're sort of digging through a lot of information and, you know, then you repost and maybe people just aren't paying attention or maybe it gets buried by the algorithm, whatever the case may be. Uh, it's not a perfect system by any stretch. And I wanted to give people a way to ask a question that didn't just, you know, like if somebody submits an email question, I get back to them as quickly as I can, but I don't really have an organized system. So now within the Simple Sales Blueprint interface, there is a whole sort of module called support for the support ticketing system, or I can't remember exactly what we titled it, but when a student clicks into there, there are two things. Number one is the support ticket database. And this is a fully searchable database of any question that has ever been asked where they, you know, they can put in a search word or a search term. They can also just browse, like you can read all the support tickets, but you can also search by, you know, tech or customer service or pricing or the calculator. So you can see sort of these umbrella terms and, and search by that. And what you get is the question that someone has asked, any Loom videos or screenshots that they may have included in their question, and the answer along with the any sort of video response and or screenshots if those things are applicable and help. And what makes this different is that before when someone asked a question, I would write them back and they would get their answer. Now, when someone asks a question, I answer it and it goes into this database that anyone else can search. So if they want my answer to a question or if they just want, you know, like some sort of response, the first thing to do is to search that database and see if I've already answered that question so that they can get an instant answer. But then the next step is the other part of this module, which is submit a support ticket, right? And so, you know, with a few clicks, they can add their question, upload a video if it's some sort of tech issue that they're having, whatever. And then because of how organized this is, I'm now able to guarantee that within two business days, they will have an answer and that answer goes into that support database. So this is a way that I am now providing better customer service to my students, giving better support, helping to overcome that objection of like, oh, I've taken online courses before. It's really, you know, I hate Facebook groups or I don't, you know, I get stuck and I need help. And like, how am I going to get help if this isn't a live course, a self-paced course? I am using this to not only solve problems for my existing students, but also anticipate those needs. Because I know that that is a legitimate problem for a lot of people when it comes to online courses. And online courses are not all created equal. When you are on the brink of purchasing something, you want to believe that all the information you need is going to be in there. But if you've had a bad experience in the past where you had a question, you got stuck, you couldn't get answers, and ultimately that meant that you were not able to complete the course or you weren't able to get the results that you were promised, that causes us to be a bit gun shy when it comes to investing in the future course. So. I wanted to tell this story or use this example as an illustration of a business that is up and running. And again, when I survey my students, they all say like, you provide great customer service. So it wasn't as though I felt like this is a problem, but I know that customer service is one of those things that can always be better. Great customer service will always mean anticipating your client's needs and problems and being ready to meet those needs and solve those problems. And the majority of those needs and problems are evergreen things, right? When it comes to photography, our clients worry that they're not going to like their photos. They're not going to like the way they look in their photos, those kinds of things. But the savvy photographer, the savvy business owner is one who keeps an eye out not only for potentially some new issues that could come up, but really for new and better ways to 
provide great customer service, to exceed the sort of expected level of customer service, and then talks about them. So that was what today was about. I hope you guys found this inspirational. And if you've got any fun examples or ideas to share, I would love for you to do that in our Facebook group at This Can't Be That Hard. Have a great week. Well, that's it for this week's episode of This Can't Be That Hard. I'll be back same time, same place next week. In the meantime, you can find more information about this episode, along with all the relevant links, notes, and downloads at thiscan'tbethathard.com slash learn. If you like the podcast, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Even better, share the love by leaving a review in iTunes. And as always, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic week.